Hey guys, I'm Mike and welcome to SimpleNursing.com. Right now you're gonna watch one of our oldies videos made a few years ago. Now it has horrible quality video production, but amazing quality educational content. So before we get today's video started, I just wanted to let you know on some exciting new stuff that we're doing to totally remaster all of our 1200 videos here at SimpleNursing.com. So no more erasing the whiteboard with a sock. We're gonna have videos that look just like this. Fibrillation fireworks is the best way to remember V-fib, the most deadly rhythm of all time. One of only two rhythms that you actually defibrillate or shock. Now the other one is pulseless v tack So what is V-fib? Well, ventricular fibrillation is a chaotic pattern of electrical activity in the ventricles in which electrical impulses arise from many different foci. All right, guys, so don't forget to do two things. First of all, subscribe right here to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any new videos coming out. And secondly, guys, try our free demo to our new quiz bank and over 1,200 videos not here on YouTube. So guys, click right up there. I'll leave the link up there for the rest of this video for you to do. So without any further ado, don't be scared, be prepared. Let's roll that oldies video. Now we get into the big mama. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is one of the biggest lectures we're going to have in our uh, psychiatric course here. You have your TCAs, your SSRIs, your MAOIs, as well as your atypical antidepressants. Woo! Now, these are all considered under the classification of antidepressants okay so you have your anti-anxiety your antidepressants as well as your antipsychotics so keep them separated those three classes okay so get a piece of paper out because guys we're gonna go one by one really um, breaking down everything and one more thing before we start the biggest thing here is patho, guys, honestly. If you have not seen the introduction of the uh, psychiatric medication video, it's only like 10 minutes. If you haven't seen it, go back and watch it because the biggest thing is the way that these drugs work. The way these drugs work, and I always preach to you guys, pathophysiology. If you don't know the patho, Everything else is not going to make sense. It's going to be a memorization game, and it shouldn't be that way. So memorize and understand the patho. Then everything else will make sense. So let's get into it. So our first one is our TCAs, which is known as our first generation antidepressants. It's what's known as your tricyclic antidepressants. And I kind of remember this as a TSA. If you guys um, have ever taken a flight somewhere, you would have to go through TSA security, and it's really slow. It's really drawn out, and the security process really lags. So um, TCAs are very slow in terms of getting to their th therapeutic uh, range. Usually takes a few weeks, if not six to eight weeks, to get to their therapeutic range, which we'll get into, okay? Now, if you guys wanna go ahead and write the names of these down, I circled the most common one that you will probably be tested on and you'll be probably be giving in the, uh, what am I saying, the clinical center. So go ahead and pause the video and you can write these down on a note card but we're gonna be going over the patho next. So pause it, if you don't pause it, I'm gonna move over. Here we go. All right, what I recommend you guys to do is write down on a note card your patho, okay? So dopamine, norepinephrine, serotonin, write down your little acronyms here, DOPE and SER, because the more you go over this, the more it'll make sense, okay? So your norepinephrine, there's a block in the reuptake. So what we're doing is we're slowing down the communication of these neurons from communicating with each other. So um, 
Also with serotonin, we are slowing down the communication problem. It's basically a prolonging of the um, neurotransmitters. So one side of the phone call is being delayed to the other connection because we're blocking these reuptake transmitters, okay? So with our norepinephrine, and then now we're trying to remember, what does norepinephrine do? Well, remember norepinephrine is that catecholamine, also known as levofed in our pharmacology, levofed or leave them dead, right? So norepinephrine helps to increase the heart rate, increase the blood pressure. So if we're slowing down the communication of norepinephrine, we're basically telling our body to not activate the heart as severely, not squeeze those vessels and cause the blood pressure to increase. So what happens as a side effect is we get heart dysrhythmias. We also get hypotension. And you also have dryness and anticholinergic effects. And if you guys have seen that um, anticholinergic video where I talk about turning on your SNS and turning off your peripheral nervous system, anticholinergic is just a fancy word for gastric juices. So you're going to be really dry, okay? If that makes sense. So um, your serotonin, on the other hand, what does serotonin do? Serotonin helps you sleep. It helps you have emotion, and it also helps your memory, helps you to remember things. So if your patients are going to have um, a serotonin discommunication, they're going to be uh, confused, lack of memory. With sedation, we also know that epin I'm sorry, norepinephrine is our um, cognitive or basically alertness. So we're going to have some sedation if we are slowing down this as well, as well as confusion. You're going to, patients are going to be like, what? And basically serotonin is going to have that memory loss. So I recommend, guys, make this little note card, put SER, put DOP, and even write down your norepinephrine on there. It's going to make life a whole lot easier. Now, you could have what's called EPSE which are basically side effects of your TCAs. And the side effects is a, what's called a, well, I put the acronym TAP. You have tardive uh, dyskinesia, where you're licking everything and lip smacking. You have uh, akinesis, acathiasis, as well as pseudo-Parkinson. Now, I have an entire lecture on this because this is a specific condition with these specific kind of toxicity level um, signs and symptoms. So write that down. You probably not even know what it means, but look at the ES, I'm sorry, EPSE video. Uh, it's going to make a whole lot more sense uh, in that video. So the patient education, remember the TCA is just like your TSA, airport security. It's very slow, very long and drawn out. You know, you have to wait in line, take your shoes off, take your belt off. Make sure you don't have any gum, tissue paper inside your pockets. Oh my gosh, it's so long. So that's why it's very slow acting. It takes six to eight weeks. Uh, now some books I found, they're like, okay, it takes two to four weeks. But the majority, I used three NCLEX books. Uh, two of them said six to eight weeks. So depending on your instructor, how they want you to learn. Okay. So... It's very slow for your max therapeutic levels, just like airport security is very slow. Now, the thing with our antidepressants, mainly with our TCAs, but I mean, honestly, it could be with any of the drugs. We're monitoring for suicide ideations. Usually in the first month, when your patients are on antidepressant medications, they're going to start feeling better. And big NCLEX question, big test questions always say, if your patients are feeling better and want to go home, uh, what are you going to monitor for? And you're thinking like, oh, discharge planning. No, don't. It's always suicide ideations. And now you're thinking like, oh my gosh, suicide, they're feeling better. Why are they having suicide thoughts? 
The thing is, they're coming out of major depression. So major depression, they wouldn't want to do anything. They just want to sit like a lump on a log, not do anything. Now they're feeling a little bit better. They're still depressed. So they might have energy to do something about feeling depressed and might have enough energy to carry out their thoughts of killing themselves. Okay, so that's why we monitor suicide ideations because your patients are coming out of major depression and having um, more energy to probably carry out their suicidal fantasies. So this is huge. If there's anything that you remember or take away from this, take away the slowness on therapeutic, mecha um, therapeutic uh, range and also monitor for suicide ideations. Next is it's very dry. So your patients are gonna be very dry. We're monitoring their eyes and nose because it has this anticholinergic effect, very dry, very anti-juices, okay? So the GI tract is going to be very dry. Their food intake, because your, if your GI tract is very dry, your patients aren't going to want to eat. So with being dry, you're going to have a low blood pressure because of our norepinephrine. We're also having low blood pressure. So your patient's getting up like orthostatic changes. They're going to sit up and then pass out. Same thing with your diuretics. All the blood sinks to the legs and your patients pass out. Okay? No cardiac meds. No MI patients. Basically, patients who've had heart attacks before can be on this. Why? Because we're limiting norepinephrine, guys. Norepinephrine is that catecholamine that helps your heart to pump. So you can't do that. Also, and honestly, this one goes for everyone. Really, everything has a weaning off. We have to wean off uh, this, uh, what's it called, drug. And pretty much with everything. But guys, honestly, the biggest thing here is monitor for suicide ideations, slow onset, and really one of the other things is no heart attack patients. Because why? Our norepinephrine here, ladies and gentlemen. All right, guys, let's go on into our SSRIs, which really block the serotonin. All right, guys, thanks for watching only one part in our full video here at simplenursing.com. If you guys click the link right here, you can get access to our full course as well as our new quiz bank, which is really nifty. And also guys, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel right here. And last, but definitely not least, a big thank you to our script team and nursing family who helped us put together all these nifty videos.